Text animation can transform your videos and can make your videos look even more interesting. And in this video, I'm going to share with you three text animation techniques in Adobe Premiere Pro that you should know about, especially if you are a content creator. And this includes a glitch effect to add a futuristic touch to your videos, then a typewriter effect which is by the way very engaging and can be used in lots of places in your videos, and then a strobe effect to add a cinematic touch to your videos. So that being said, without any further delay, let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and let's get started with the glitch text animation. Okay, we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and let's start with adding a new sequence. So for that, go to the project panel, click on the new item button and then click on sequence. From here, you have to select the sequence preset. I'm selecting 4K 25 FPS. If you want, you can select some other preset from here as well and then name the sequence and then click on OK. And now we will add the text. So click on the text tool to select the tool and then click on the preview panel and type in the text. And now we will double click on the text to select the entire text, go to the essential graphics panel and change the font style to hydrophilia eyes and use the align panel to align it properly with the preview panel and scale it up to 400 and let's extend the entire layer in the timeline for a few seconds. Okay, now let's apply an effect called block dissolve. So go to the effects panel and search for it and we're going to apply this effect. For now, I'm going to keep the block width 50 and the block height 50. Let's apply another effect via digital glitch. So search it and apply it. And in the effects control panel, Let's keep the master amplitude zero for now and another effect wave warp. So search it in the effects panel again and apply it. In the effects control panel, change the wave type to square and give the wave height zero and the wave width one, then the direction zero. And now we're going to jump on to next eight frames. So here click in the timestamp and enter plus eight and the playhead will jump onto next 8th frame. And now go to the effects control panel. Under block dissolve, add a keyframe on transition completion. Under weird digital glitch, add a keyframe on master amplitude and random shade. Under wave warp effect, add a keyframe on wave height and wave width. And one more thing, let's change the random shade under weird digital glitch to 40. Now let's move the playhead to the very first frame and let's change the wave height to 380 and wave width to 200. Then under digital glitch, give the random seed 0 and the master amplitude 100%. Then under block dissolve, we're going to give the transition completion 100%. And now if we preview it, we can see a nice glitchy effect. And one more thing we can do over here is just select the wave height and wave width end keyframes and move it few frames backward. And now it looks even better. Okay, now to add some glitchy flicker, we are simply going to animate master amplitude and random seed. So add keyframes on these two properties after a few frames. Why do you want to add the flicker? And let's jump on to next six frames and change the master amplitude to around 30%, again jump on to next 6 or 5 frames and this time give the master amplitude 0% and the random seed to 70 or maybe you can change it to 80 and now it adds a little flicker after the glitch. Okay, now let's move on with the typewriter effect. Okay, now let's start with adding the text. In the essential graphics panel, go to the align section and align it properly with the preview panel. Then under text, I want to change it to center aligned. Again, align it properly. And now extend the layer length of the text in the timeline for a few seconds. Now select the text layer in the timeline. Go to the effects control panel. Under text section, let's add a keyframe on source text. Now let's jump on to next four frame and add a keyframe on source text again. By the way, to move forward or backward in Premiere Pro, you have to press the arrow key in the keyboard. To move forward, you have to press the right arrow key. For backward, you have to press the left arrow key. So let's move the playhead at the start of the timeline and delete the entire text. So from here, we are going to start typing the text. So let's cut the entire text, only keep T. So Ctrl plus X to cut. 
Now let's jump on to next four frames again. Enter the rest of the text. Keep the first two letters and remove the other letters from the text layer. And like this, we are going to repeat the process for the entire text. And now we have a nice typing effect. Okay, now we are going to add a cursor. Let's start the entire text layer from the 10th frame. And let's move the playhead at the start. And now let's use the pen tool and create a line stroke. Cancel the fill in the essential graphics panel and add a stroke with a stroke width of around 12 pixels. And now let's extend the length of this graphic layer. So now we will animate the position property of this graphic layer. So select the layer, go to the effects control panel and add a keyframe on position property. And now let's jump on to previous four frame and shift the line little bit left in the X axis. Okay, after that, we will again jump on to next four frame from the second keyframe and move this line after the Y. And like this, we are going to add keyframes on the position property, matching the animation and the timing of the animation of the typewriter effect. And once you have added all the keyframes, just select the keyframes, right click on it, go to temporal interpolation and convert it into hold keyframes. Okay, now we have to add a little bit of flicker in this cursor. So for that, we can animate the opacity property. So select the layer again, go to the effects control panel, and then go to the opacity section, add a keyframe on opacity. Now let's jump on to next six frames and give the opacity zero. Again, jump on to next six frame and give the opacity 100%. And now we are going to convert these linear keyframes into hold keyframes. So for that, select the keyframe, right click on it and select hold. And now we can copy this set of keyframes for that, select the keyframe, control plus C to copy and paste it over here. Again, copy it, go to the last keyframe or move the cursor to the last keyframe. And like this, we can extend the entire animation loop. And this is how it finally turns out. And finally, let's start animating the strobe effect in Premiere Pro. So add a text and change the text paragraph to center aligned, then all caps, and then align it properly with the preview panel and increase the size. And I'm going to change the font style to good times. And let's extend the length of the graphic in the timeline. Okay, now let's add a keyframe on the opacity in the effects control panel. Jump onto next eight frames and add a keyframe on the opacity again. And let's move the time indicator to the start of the timeline and give the opacity zero. After that, from the second keyframe, let's jump on to next eight frames again and give the opacity 0%. Select these three linear keyframes, right click on it, convert it to hold keyframes. Then we can copy and paste this three set of keyframes three more times. So we basically want to add blink to this text four times like this. And finally at the end, after a few frames, we can give the opacity 100% again. And it's already looking pretty decent. Now we can make this look even more interesting by animating the tracking amount. So for that, move the playhead at the start, open the text property in the effects control panel, add a keyframe on the source text property. And now let's jump on to next eight frame again and add a keyframe. Again, let's jump on to next 16th frame and we are going to increase the tracking amount. So this is the tracking property and we will increase it to 150. Again, jump on to next 16 frames and add another 150. So it's going to be 300. Again, jump on to next 16th frame and give it around 450. And then we can add a little scale to this animation as well. So let's jump on to next eight frames and add a keyframe on the scale property. Let's jump on to next 16th frame and add a keyframe. And again, jump on to next 16th frame and add a keyframe on the scale property. So on the second keyframe, we will scale it down to 90% or 85%. And on the first keyframe of the scale property, we can scale it down to about 70%. And then select these three linear keyframes, right click on it, convert it into hold keyframes. And this is how it turns out. 
So these are the three text animation techniques as I promised. And one more thing, there are different ways to achieve the same text animation effect. So I would highly encourage you to play with the settings, do some experiments with it and see if you can come up with a unique style of your own. So that is it for this video and I will see you in the next one. And as always, stay curious, stay bold and keep pushing your boundaries. Goodbye.